We've gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus risen from the dead, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, I welcome you as we gather for this 5 p.m. vigil mass around the altar on this second Sunday of Easter that's beautifully known as Divine Mercy Sunday. As we've captured in our gathering hymn tonight, we do call upon the mercy of our God. We pray that that risen mercy that Jesus entrusted to his disciples may be with us and be with all those across our world, across our nation, across our parish, who are especially fearful or are in need of our prayers at this time as a result of the coronavirus. We also continue to pray in a spirit of Easter for our family, our friends, and as always, I welcome those who are gathering from our Northern and Southern Mass Centres, along with those who have been gathering with us during Holy Week and our Triduum and Easter celebrations from many parts of the nation and even around the world. I welcome you as we gather to celebrate this Mass. We remember the words of St. Faustina Kowalska, who reminds us in her diary that you and I are called to always call upon the divine mercy of the Saviour. We pray for that divine mercy as we now call to mind our sins. mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teachings of the apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each one needed. They went as a body to the temple every day, but met in their houses for the breaking of the bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day, the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. I was thrust, thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my saviour. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. He is good. He is good. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy 
has given us a new birth as his sons by raising Jesus Christ from the dead so that we have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoilt or soiled and never fade away because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith, God's power will guard you until the salvation which had been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being plagued by all sorts of trials, so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will have been tested and proved like gold. Only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible, even though it bears testing by fire. And then you will have praise and glory and honour. You did not see him, yet you love him. And still, without seeing him, you are already filled with a joy so glorious it cannot be described because you believe and you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward, that is, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to be God. God. Believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me but still believe. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin was one of the twelve who was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. 
Well, once again, happy Easter. And I pray and hope that these Easter days have been days of great joy and hope for you and for all of the members of our parish community. As I'm sure many of you would know, every year on this second Sunday of Easter, on this Divine Mercy Sunday, we usually centre our reflections on the doubting of Thomas and on our call, yours and mine, to be people of faith and not of doubt. And as always, such a message is an important one. But for me, if there is one thing we cannot overlook when reflecting on this passage of Scripture, especially during these days of social distancing and the stay-at-home protocols, is the attitude of the risen Lord towards his disciples. Now, I think it'd be fair to say that if you and I were Jesus, our first words to the disciples would probably not have been, peace be with you. Clearly, I think if you and I were Jesus, it's more likely that we would have set those disciples straight. We probably would have at least asked them, where were you guys on Friday? But as they say, fortunately, Jesus is not us. Jesus does not come to holler or scream or to put people in their place. Rather, as the risen one, Jesus continues what his cross revealed and what his cross affected, namely the mercy of God, a divine mercy that during these days has been spoken about through action and word by countless women and men who are fighting a virus, not with weapons of war, but rather using a phrase from Martin Luther King Jr., have been fighting this virus with the weapons of love. As I've mentioned already, brothers and sisters, the good news is that Christ is not us. But I do think with that good news comes some hard news. And that is that God calls us, you and me, to be like Jesus. In other words, in the midst of a fearful world, a world where during these days, many people are not just physically locked behind doors for their protection and the protection of the most vulnerable, but also a time when many are locked spiritually behind the closed doors of fear and hatred, anger and the unknown. You and I are called to be people who founded on the message of today's scripture readings, are people who reveal the truth of goodness and of mercy. People who look to the healing of the future and not simply the wounds of the past. Is such an Easter call easy to live out? No. And as they say, Jesus has the wounds to prove it. But as St. Faustina, who was canonised by Pope St. John Paul II during the year of the Great Jubilee, reminds us in her diary, in their meeting with Christ after his resurrection, Jesus entrusted to his fearful disciples a gift. A gift, she says, that flows from the wounds in his hands, his feet, and from his pierced side. And that's the gift of his divine mercy. Let's pray, therefore, on this Easter day, that as we gather in our domestic churches, our homes, that as we hear in today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, was the primary meeting place for the early church. Let's pray that the great event of Easter, in which you and I see love unfold in its most radical form, will inspire all of us to continue to be courageous witnesses of mercy. Today, I invite you, as we gather to listen to God's word, to make together this act of spiritual communion, to use that prayer that St. Faustina gave us, and to make it your own. May our prayer as individuals and domestic churches be today and always, Jesus, we trust in you.
while every Sunday and every weekend is a great opportunity for us to renew our faith commitment. This is especially true during these Easter days. So I invite you now in union with me to renew our commitment of faith, the faith of the Easter church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Confident in his abundant love and mercy for us, we offer him ourselves and our loved ones as we pray. For the church, for those who are faithful to the teaching to the apostles, of the apostles, to the common life of faith, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who, having met the risen Jesus in this life, have changed their lives and follow him wholeheartedly, and who radiate love and joy and peace for their brothers and sisters, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who share what they have with the poor, who sacrifice their own advantages to help others, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who, like Thomas, doubt this day, for those who believe Jesus has nothing to offer them, those who feel and are rejected by their church community, for those who believe they are too broken, too hurt, too far gone, too stained by this world for God to love them, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve customers, clean buildings, attend to patients, respond to emergencies, for those struggling to educate their students or children, for those who discern and work towards the common good, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are frightened, whether of disease, of losing a loved one or their job, those who live in fear of the ones they live with, and for those who fear for the future, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle to forgive, especially those who have been gravely wounded, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not know peace, those whose hearts are violent and vengeful, those who suffer from violence, who live estranged from family and friends, who are imprisoned, in detention, in hospitals, or in the care of any kind. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn and for our loved ones who have died, we pray particularly for Bishop William Murray, the second Bishop of Wollongong, whose anniversary it is, and for all whose names we speak now in the silence of our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that have been submitted to us and are contained in our prayer basket, for the prayers that we carry in our hearts, let us together have a moment of silence, bringing those prayers and intentions before our risen Lord. Lord God, you are the one who shows mercy, who shows love even when we don't deserve it. 
You so love us that you send Jesus to die for us and your Holy Spirit to join us in love to one another and to you. Hear our prayers and continue to show mercy to us as we grow in faith and allow you the space to work through us to build up your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those who were brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Oh, my God. 
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. 
be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them. As once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. I want to thank each and every one of you for the way that you have been truly entering into these live stream masses. Isn't it beautiful to think that at this very moment, no matter what device that we are participating in this mass from and on, we are truly united around this altar. And Jesus is truly present among us through word and through sacrament. I thank each and every one of you for the way that you have been not so much watching these masses, but participating in these masses participating not simply through word, but through action. So I invite us in the spirit of this Easter day, once again, to open our hands in a spirit of openness and prayer. For like the risen Lord, and at his command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power and, and the glory are yours now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Whether we are alone or gathered with other members in our household, let us together in a spirit of unity, in the spirit of this Divine Mercy Sunday, pray for that gift of Divine Mercy as we pray together an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Having listened to God's word, having made together this act of spiritual communion, let us prior to our song of praise, spend this moment once again in silent prayer, bringing our own intentions before the Lord, praying for one another. Christ is risen from the dead. We now praise our God for the gift of his son, risen and among us. Come and rise up 
You got to run, but heaven's will. No scheme of hell, no scoffer's crown, no burden great can hold you down in strength. You reign forever, let your church proclaim Christ is risen from the dead. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Once again, on this Easter day, I want to thank you for participating with me in this Easter Mass. Once again, if you haven't done so already, I really encourage you in the spirit of Easter joy and hope to keep sharing our social media channels with people in your circle of acquaintances, with loved ones, with family and with fellow parishioners. And a big thank you to all those who have been subscribing to our parish e-newsletter, The Overview. If you aren't already a subscriber, all you need to do is go to our parish website, marymckilletparish.org.au. Also, just a reminder, as announced on Easter Sunday, tomorrow afternoon, Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m., we'll be live streaming through this parish YouTube channel, a time of adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, and also we'll be praying together the Divine Mercy Chaplet. To assist those who are wanting to participate fully in this time of prayer tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m., the words of this Chaplet of Divine Mercy can be found in a special edition of our e-newsletter, The Overview, that was sent out on this Saturday afternoon. Also, they're available on our parish Facebook page. But also, too, the links uh, following this Mass will be available in the description for this Mass on our parish YouTube channel. Also, too, in response to Pope Francis's reminder to parish communities to never forget that if we are isolated, Thought and spirit can go far with the creativity of love. And acknowledging a request from a number of you who have said to me, Father David, are there ways that we can be symbolically present during our live stream parish masses? I've drawn on an idea from our friends in the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels in Los Angeles, and I'm inviting you to join with me to bring your prayers and intentions before the risen Lord calling upon the intercession of our beloved patron, St. Mary MacKillop, who reminds us in one of her letters that prayer is our greatest weapon. You may have noticed today that here before the altar is our statue, our parish statue of Mary MacKillop, and you'll see a number of candles that have been placed at the base of that statue. And I thank those of you who have already responded to this invitation and who have presented your offerings and these intentions. For those who would like to have a candle lit here before the statue of St. Mary MacKillop that will be lit during our live stream masses, all you need to do is go to the link that can be found again at the description for this YouTube channel for this mass, but also too is found in our latest edition of the Overview and on Parish Facebook page. But this is one symbolic way, at least, for us to be united together, bringing our prayers and our intentions before Jesus. Also, too, to the young people of our parish, especially those young parishioners who are participating in this live stream mass, I really have been thinking of you over these days. This has truly been a unique school holiday time for all of us. And if your family hasn't done so already, I really encourage you to, with the, to support your adult family members to go and to take up our Easter gift as a parish, which is a subscription to Formed. 
Formed is basically Catholic Netflix, and all the details about Formed, once again, can be found on our parish Facebook page and in our editions of the Overview. We have a parish free trial of Formed up until Friday of this week. Just enough time for some of us to watch some of the movies and to use some of the other beautiful resources that are part of the resource that's called Formed. So I really encourage you in this week of the school holidays to take up this opportunity. And for those of you that have already told me that you're loving your form subscription, if you'd like to become a formed ambassador and maybe sponsor a part of our parish subscription, I really encourage you to contact me through the parish uh, office by sending an email to the parish or just a phone call to let us know that you'd like to be one of our formed ambassadors and to be a part of that subscription. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have not just a two-week subscription, but this could travel right throughout this year, bringing the Catholic faith into our home through this resource that's called Formed. And finally, as we come to the end of this Mass, I want to thank so many of you who, despite the fact that we can't gather physically in our parish mass centres at Leppington and Oran Park, have been really reaching out in a spirit of sharing your time, your talent and your financial treasure. If you would still like to be a supporter and to do all you can to financially support our parish during this time, and if you usually donate to us by cash donations at church, I encourage you once again at the end of this live stream mass just to go to our parish website or to go to our diocesan website, which is dow.org.au forward slash plan giving to find our parish of Oran Park in the drop down menu and to make an offering. This will really go a long way to assist us not only to continue to be able to bring one another these live stream masses, but so that we can continue to live out our purpose and our vision as a parish. I wish you and your loved ones the blessings and graces of Easter. Let's never forget, everyone, that we truly are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. We now ask God's blessing upon us as we come to the end of this Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Before we conclude our Mass tonight, I wanted to remind you and to really um, let you know of something that's pretty exciting. And that is, we've had a number of requests from many of you saying, Father David, wouldn't it be lovely if we could join in the prayers and the hymns that we've been singing together? You'll be pleased to know the answer is now yes. We've been able to get access to all of the hymns and through our subscription, through one license, we'll be able now to bring you a worship aid that will be included every Friday in our Friday e-newsletter, The Overview, and also will be put up onto our parish Facebook page. This will be a way for all of us to join in a spirit of song. For as they say, for those who sing, they pray twice. So let's continue to lift our voices to God over these Easter days as we praise through worship, through song. God bless you. Happy Easter.